Hey there, Jaden. Hope you're enjoying your spring break and uh, having a good time. Um, as a reminder, I'll be here next week, so I'll see you on the 20... What is that? I will see you on uh, the 24th. The 31st will we'll be up for spring break. So I'll see you next week, and then the following week um, I'll be out after that. So you we're here next week, uh, and, and then 31st uh, I'll be out. So cool, man. So uh, this is your video lesson for you, obviously. Um, three things I want to talk about. I'll go down the list, and then if you have any questions at the end, um, feel free to shoot them on over to me, and or have your mom shoot them over to me, uh, and I'll do my best to answer. So first thing is a review of the uh, Magic Box. Now I'm in, uh, we should get back to the standard. So first thing is Magic Triangle Reveal. Um, I remember we went over Magic Triangle um, a while ago uh, when we were finding um, the blue note on, um, in our E minor pentatonic box. Um, I'm gonna quick review on that. So remember that, say on the sixth string, right, the reason why we have to do root six, root five real well is because that'll allow us to find things on strings four and three uh, a little bit easier. Um, so Magic Triangle is just a way for us to find uh, notes all over our fretboard. So, say for example, if we're here on string six, right, which is E, E, F, F sharp, G. This note is G right here, right, as you know. And I'm gonna go down two strings and over two frets. So I go down two strings and over two frets. I'm on string four in the fifth fret, and that gives me the same note, oops, that's on the sixth string. It's the uh, Hendrix tune, um, God, what, what is that, what is that? Um, or say, uh, oh God, uh, immigrant song by um, by Zeppelin. Um, they use octave boxes in there for their for their riffs. Um, so anyway, so we have that same note, uh, G here. You go down two strings over two frets. It gives you the same G. Now, if I want to play that as a as an octave box in, in unison together at the same time, um, I play it like this. Now, what am I doing there? Is I'm doing the same kind of muting that I did with a power chord. Um, this time, uh, for me to mute the, if I want to play these two notes at the same time, right? Well, I got a string in between. So what I'm doing is I'm laying my finger down just a little bit, and I'm muting that fifth string right there. So nothing, that string isn't ringing out. All right. So I have my third fret, sixth string, fifth fret, uh, fourth string, and I'm using the, the side of my index finger to mute everything else. So I'm using it to mute the fifth string and then strings three, two, one. So that way I get... Or say, uh... Oh, what's that one right? I think it's Bulls on Parade, right? Yeah, I think we got the right one. Yeah, but you find octave box riffs all over the place. Um, uh, there's one by the Pumpkins. Right? It's Cherub Rock by Smashing Pumpkins. Um, Foo Fighters uses them. Um, Alice in Chain uses them. Um, Soundgarden uses them. Everybody uses them. Um, 3D Grit. 3D is Grace uses them as we'll see. Um, not this lesson, but the next lesson. So, uh, we have our octave box here, it's a review of uh, root 5, or sorry, root 6. Now let's move it down to root 5, and we're going to move this whole thing down just one string. I'm going to come over here to the 5th fret, so I'm going to find D on the 5th string. So A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, and now you're in a D. Same rule applies. I go down two strings over two frets, and it gives me the same note. Same muting as I did before. I'm laying my first finger down, just like how we do for a power chord. Muting those strings, and I'm muting the fifth. I'm sorry. And this time I'm muting the fourth string is in between the fifth and the third. I mean that one in between, just the same as I did on root six. So I have a D here, a D here, and then what you do? Imagine if you're going to do a C chord right here. Okay, a C down here. Down. So this time my my ring finger is on the. Uh, fifth fret, I'm going to go on fifth fret, fifth string, and I'm going to be, my first string is going to be here on the, on the um, second string, third fret, I'm going to move here so you can see the headstock, so you can see what fret I'm on, 
right? So I'm here at the fifth fret, fifth string. I'm here on the thir uh, third fret, second string. And that's the same exact note. So changing the fingering, it looks like this. Now to triangle, five, seven, because that's down two strings over two frets. And then you jump out of here and grab third fret, second string. D, D, D. I know that like if I go if I count frets here, zero, one, two, three, four, that's my D, it's four frets away. And you can cycle it. Right? Cool. So that's octave boxes and magic triangle. So remember with magic triangle, uh, you're finding the note, and then you lean the first finger down a little bit and you can play those in unison right there. And you can use octave boxes to write riffs, as um, Tom Morello does, or uh, did, or Billy Corgan, or Dave Grohl, or any of those other people. They use octave boxes all the time for their riffs. Now, um, if we jump over to the next thing is um, Three Days Grace uh, Pain. Um, I'll show you the intro riff today, and then intro slash verse riff, and then next time we'll look at the um, we'll look at the uh, the chorus riff. Um, it has a couple of octave boxes in there that we should look at. So the first thing with pain is tab, let me pull the tab up here. There you go. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to, I will send the tab over as well, so that'll be in, a, uh, in an email that uh, will be with the name series. Send it to your mom. 14, 12 on the third string, so 14 on the fourth string, 12 on the third string. I'm gonna pick those. And then I'm gonna pick strings one and two, just like that. I'm gonna take my third finger, move that down. My second, my first finger stays the same. And I'm gonna pick four, three, and point the string numbers. Four, three, and playing two and one together. So it sounds like this. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna scooch down here. My second finger is gonna grab the twelfth fret, and my third finger is gonna grab the twelfth fret on the third string. And then I'm going to move down here to 11 on the fourth string. I'm going to lift off this middle finger and put my first finger down. I would advise to use your first finger on this. I find it easier. So together. All right. Just like that. And then he starts over again. 14, 14, 13. Comes down to 12. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So 12, 12, and then 11. And then it comes down here to 10 on the second time. So he comes down here and grabs 10 on the fourth string. Oh, sorry. I'm going to call it the stringers. So 4, 3, 2, 3, 1. All together, it looks like this. 13, 12, 11, start over again. 12, 10, and that's the, that's the riff right there. That's the intro, and I believe it is the verse as well, if I'm ready. The verse is a, is a, is like a simplified version of that. Um, so if you can play, if you can play that, that's the, ver the verse he, he kind of, what he does is he'll But we'll get that next time. Just worry about getting the intro this week. All right, so do the intro um, and then work on your octave boxes. And then, oh, and then here's your assignment with, with pain for the intro riff is I want you to tell me what notes these are on the fourth string by using the magic triangle. The way you would do that is you would reverse engineer it, basically. So you go, you know, you're starting here on 14, right? On the, on the fourth string. There, 14 there and you work yourself back two frets and up two strings, and that, right there, will give you your note name for that note. Now, you're gonna be like, why is it important for me to know the notes on the fourth string if root five or root six will tell me like most chords I need to know? And the answer is because the, the direction we're moving in um, as your soloing gets more and more um, advanced, um, 
we're gonna be targeting tones. So when I solo, I'm hearing what chord you're playing and I'm aiming for like a note in the chord. And they're not always, I'm not gonna be soloing too much on the fifth and sixth strings in this style. Um, I'm, I, so I have to know what these notes are. So that way if you're playing, for example, if you're playing like a B minor chord, right, I have to know where the Bs are for me to aim for. So if I'm playing this chord, I have to know which ones to target. 